Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, I want to talk about um, kind of a lot of subjects, but uh, this has come to my attention recently because apparently um, Stephen Gibbs, the uh, mentally ill uh, claimer to time travel, uh, who I worked with for about 10 years uh, and built actually HDR units based from his schematics, and sold probably 30, 40 of them over the years, uh, which everybody is intrigued by time travel. It's really a comic book a reality uh, that people are very interested in. A lot of books have been written about it. A lot of people came out and talked that they did it, etc. And in the 1990s was a time of extremely boom with what I call it the advanced and alternative sciences. <clears throat> And I was right in the middle of this, having an institute opened up, the only radionic institute ever on, uh, on this planet, uh, which had open store, people could come and see things, and uh, a large mail order operation selling alternative science, what are called reports and books. These are information gathered uh, over many, many years, taken from all sorts of sources, old magazines, etc. Uh, and this was out there and compiled by several people were doing this, compiling information, getting information from sources that uh, generally were just, you know, bits and pieces here or there. And there were several people doing this. Um, Al Fry, David French. These are people that were very uh, big in this field selling these kind of reports is what we used to call them. We had over a thousand of these, and they would sell anywhere from 50 cents to 30, 40, 50 dollars, depending if they were plans. There was a lot of stuff out there uh, that people wrote. I don't believe most of it. I think uh, most of it did, did absolutely nothing. It doesn't work, never did, but that's not the reason that I was selling it uh, and uh, publishing many authors. One of those authors was uh, Stephen Gibbs and his group of people. Patricia Reese, Reese, who is still involved in writing with uh, uh, out there uh, very bad information as usual because she knows absolutely nothing, along with a whole bunch of other people. And there's a whole series of events here that people don't quite understand and um, don't know the bigger picture whatsoever. Uh, but there was a big, big interest in this, and uh, I had a very profitable operation. It's only about forty thousand dollars worth of products a month. Then, of that, uh, about seventy percent of that were all these different reports. Which people would order hundreds of these. They were inexpensive, and people instead of wanting to get one book for thirty, forty dollars, um, they would buy sixty reports for a hundred dollars. So. And it was very fascinating information. The whole idea is I never published any of this as fact. I don't know what works. I'm not really, or anybody out there, cannot come out and say, well, this is good or this is bad, when it is speculative information. Now, you can always... Um, criticize someone and go through whatever it is, plans or information, and say, I don't like it, I don't believe it. Well, that's right, and that's your opinion. I never had the fact that this is the last word. Well, try it yourself. Maybe you could figure out by getting this information that stimulates the process of invention and greater thinking, maybe you can figure out a way to get it to work. Uh, the concepts here are certainly interesting. Uh, and this is what, as I said, we had thousands of these, uh, all sorts of free energy and other things. And of course, we know that none of these free energy devices have really ever made it to the public. All these people involved in that, like this entire mired area of alternative science, is fraught with frauds, buy-offs, and uh, the supporting of known technologies that don't work. And of course, that's what happened with Stephen Gibbs. And his story is kind of interesting, but it ties in with so many other things things and all those uh, government informants and those people that go out there and uh, destroy people who are trying to do things. But my whole, so I published Stephen Giggs, I, I think yeah, what did he have eight different time travel books. He had schematics, he had other things, and of course the HDR unit, which were changed um, very minorly um, from time to time. Uh, thinking that somehow, um, it's amusing reading a little blurb on this, that uh, um, uh, that somehow the different K resistors in there would make time travel possible. That the 10K that was used in the beginning has been changed to 15K, and this now makes it better. 
Uh, so the whole idea is it's very, very interesting with all this. So should we just take stuff and throw it away? Should we overly support people as well? Well, no. I don't think we should throw away any information. Uh, you have to find some way to get it to work if there's something there, or this should stimulate you to move into it. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do uh, when you write a book, is that you know you have a bibliography of all the information you got from other people, and you're supposed to get which I don't believe in, by the way, but you're supposed to then come to a synergistic understanding. You take all this information, put it together with what you know personally to come up with a higher and better conclusion. Now, anytime you get into alternative science, we just don't know. Certainly, there were hundreds of plans for all sorts of different radionic instruments. There were hundreds of plans for all sorts of free energy. Now, who has the skill and time uh, to actually manufacture these things? Well, I certainly didn't, but I figured, hey, let's get this information out there. Maybe somebody else can actually do something with it. And this was a great burgeoning time where you um, people were interested in this. They followed through. And you got to remember, this is pre-internet. Unfortunately, the fraud of the internet, where people thought that a lot of this information uh, could be gotten for free, which is not true, um, then stopped buying the mail order stuff, thinking they could get it for free. Part of, of course, a government conspiracy against me. Um, and, of course, this hurt and uh, the reduction of sales of those items. Unfortunately, all that information now has been lost, and virtually none of it is on uh, the net now, or, or even can be obtained. So it's a real shame, but this is the process of information. When somebody is either harassed or dies or something happens, nobody really picks up the baton and keeps running with it. And that's the whole idea. And there is billions of dollars and a massive uh, network of criminals working with uh, governmental agencies, including all your local police departments, to harass and um, even kill and murder people. So, and this goes on all the time. Now, you don't understand this, you don't believe it because you're on the outside and they smiley face you uh, while this entire criminal reality goes on. Uh, and of course, it's all about getting the most uh, ridiculous people, the publicity, and pushing them out there. Now, at this time, time travel is very big, but nothing was really done about it. Of course, we had Back to the Future and the comic things, which, of course, uh, was apparently where Stephen Gibbs got the hyper-dimensional re resonator concept from, was watching that fiction movie, which certainly is 100% fiction. Uh, so the whole idea is that time travel in general has always been gossip that, of course, the big bad government who can't really do anything except harass and murder people has all this advanced technology. We hear this from uh, very discreditable people, people of the lowest uh, morality and uh, realities, people like Preston Nichols and other things who come out with these really fictionalized stories that basically have little or no foundation. We're not sure what really happened anywhere. And we certainly can't believe them. There are people with sketchy memories that tend to back these people up, and we're just not really sure what all this means. Certainly, very little comes from it. Uh, then they somehow get people of dubious intelligence, connections, etc., to write books about them, etc. So when you really get into this, it's, it's, a, it's a really big group of um, controlled, bought-off people uh, of very little analytical abilities and no proof of anything whatsoever. Time travel is something that's fascinated everybody. I don't know anybody that hasn't uh, seen the classic movie by um, uh, on the Wells book, uh, The Time Machine, and everybody's looked at this. I remember in uh, watching this in the late 60s with family, and of course, the big question at the time, what three books would you take? And of course, well, you know, you always take the Bible. And of course, this was one of the things. Because in the time machine, uh, he left his uh, time and took three books with him uh, that uh, he would use with this new society he would start. Uh, and of course, time travel is always fascinating. And of course, rightfully so. And I'm going to be breaking this up into many different parts here. Probably about a half an hour uh, per 
uh, discussion here so people can kind of cut this up and digest it and something that you could listen to. But time travel is fascinating. And as I said, I don't think anybody hadn't seen that movie and hasn't wondered, gee, what it would be like to have a time machine. After all, um, uh, looking back or after the fact is always 2020. It's always perfect. Oh, yeah, I know what happened there because I went. And we all would like to go back and do things differently. We'd like to influence situation. We'd like to go ahead and get information, as in Back to the Future with getting the uh, winning sports numbers so you become quite wealthy. So any of this, of course, gives you a fantastic and amazing amount of empowerment. And again, there's been stories. There's been stories of these possible things happening, but none of it seems to be very well controlled. Uh, and there really is no proof of anything, and people involved in all these things, like most people, don't really have any proof they've done anything. Now, I talked to a lot of people who were testing uh, Gibbs and other time um, plans that I had, because there are many people that had different ideas about time traveling, machines, etc. And basically what Gibbs put together was a, a pseudo-radionic machine. It had two wells, you're supposed to tune. So basically it was just based on radionics with wherever he got that other information from. I've been recently contacted by someone who says he gave the plans to Gibbs. Uh, about this, and I will update you on that as well when I communicate with this person. The other thing is the fact that um, you run into constant disinformation. There are people out there, as I said, Preston Nichols, the Montauk Project, was supposed to be experimenting with this, but it was much bigger than that. I mean, the Montauk Project was about transferring consciousness uh, from a being into a child, basically, so you could live forever. I mean, and of course, Again, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, what's the ultimate challenge to you uh, once you are in this reality, have everything you want, are rich, famous, and really don't worry about anything? Well, the point is the bottom line, as it was with everybody in the beginning of time, including what the Egyptians did, which they spent their entire time uh, working on. So all of their time, all of their building really was the fact of going to heaven, living forever. And this burial rites were people not... Uh, to not uh, honoring the dead, but they're building bur uh, burial mounds. I mean, the Vikings did this. People think Vikings all burnt themselves. Well, this is really not true. They built uh, mounds, and they had entire ships under these mounds. They had weapons. They killed uh, their pets, uh, their slaves, uh, their wives, and put them in the mound with that person because they would then be transferred to this new world where they would live forever. And of course, isn't that the pervading statement through almost everything in life? And ultimately, when it really comes down to it, what humans want to do to the highest level and spent most of their time and money on is living uh, forever. Immortality is what the Egyptians, the Vikings, everybody did. And we're doing it today where we have cryogenics, I guess I want to call it, where I mean, they cut your head off and freeze it and they want to bring you back to life. Uh, but the bottom line is that we live a pathetically short lifespan. Basically, we have 30, 40 years of life that is somewhat productive. The rest of it, we're slaves till we're 18. You can't do anything. You're not legal. You are basically have no rights whatsoever until you're 18 to 21. After that, you then have to, of course, make your way in life, get a college education or some other trade to figure out how to make money. And, of course, we go on and on. So you're constantly doing things that just basically survive. Maybe you're lucky enough when you reach your 30s or 40s that you have a little extra time to go into hobbies, research, or do whatever. Uh, and then, of course, the minute you start reaching your 40s and 50s, you generally have some sort of physical problem at either a small or large level that starts to deteriorate you. And the average life expectancy to this day is about 80 when you average it out around the world with a lot of people in societies reaching 85. And this has been going on for literally hundreds of years, by the way. It's nothing new. Uh, Daniel Boone lived to be 86. Benjamin Franklin lived to be 83. So the point is, is that if you think this is a modern medicine, basically life expectancy has started to go down between uh, the illnesses that are striking the planet and the lack of care, uh, real care out there, the... Um, the benefits of keeping people alive uh, because of the fact that medications keep your heart beating. Um, 
you know, uh, in the life of ex-president and now dead president Ronald Reagan, well, he didn't know where he was for the last 15 years of his life. So I think he lived to be 86 or something, but he really was dead at 70. I mean, no, he didn't know anything. Uh, and, you know, what people don't understand with Alzheimer's is you don't even know to poo. So you poo everywhere, you spread it every, rub it on that. You're just totally a zombie, but your heart is beating. Ah, thank you, modern medicine. So a lot of people are living into their middle 80s, and a lot of people are making it into their early 90s. But they're still dying in their 90s, and we must assume that these people are pretty feeble. And from what I understand from my basic research, haven't spent too much time on it, but from my investigations, that people who are in their late 80s and 90s all need help. They're not functioning well. Now, they may be intelligent well, but their body is basically gone. They can't walk, they need help, they can't do anything by themselves, they have to use assistance, they need nurses. Um, so, of course, this would be a great way to solve all of our problems, which we all claim um, uh, that the mechanization has replaced jobs, and it certainly has, and it basically certainly should. Uh, everybody should be moving to taking care of their fellow man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's an amusing thing. Nobody gives a damn about anybody else on this planet. That's part of the human illness. But certainly that would be where everybody should be transferring into, and there should be a stage of your life that probably everybody, instead of going into the farcical uh, service or the military for a few years, which a lot of countries require, people should be spending five to ten years of their lives assisting older people and then maybe moving into another per, uh, profession uh, that is then you're able to train yourself in after you've spent five to ten years uh, in a service industry helping people. Then you should have paid um, assistance into college of your choice, which should be free. Oh, you solved another problem, Thor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Let me show you what we do. I wrote that on a piece of paper. I wiped my ass with it, and I flushed it down the toilet. We don't need no answers, Doctor. So the whole idea is that this is the kind of reality that we have out there that we have to face. Now, uh, so everybody's fascinated by time travel. And as I said, I don't know if anybody who hasn't seen that movie uh, with Rod Taylor. It's great. It was done very well. I think it was very fascinating uh, seeing a weak, a feeble society. Uh, he interacted with the baddies that were these creatures. I think it's a great movie, and everybody's fascinated by that. What if you had prior knowledge? I mean, this is the, what everybody wants. Is the you know Everybody wants to be rich by winning the lottery. Why? Because there's no work involved. It's a lot of money, and what are you supposed to do? Make money somewhere else, which is very difficult and near impossible. But, you know, that really doesn't happen very often, even though there has been some uh, psychics who've been able to predict the stock market and are able to predict uh, the general <clears throat> uh, numbers as well. Some people have actually gotten some of the numbers to win some serious. So, I mean, it certainly is possible, but, man, is that a long shot. And you're going to have to be very tuned in to do it. Uh, and very few people are going to do it. So when we get involved in these things in, in time travel, it really fascinates people. And we sold an awful lot of these reports on time travel. As I said, I think Gibbs had eight of them. I published, printed these, published them um, in uh, beautiful hardbound editions as well. And... Um, assistant because he really couldn't do anything himself he was struggling getting these things out really couldn't build the hdr units i'm not sure if he ever did had somebody else do it so we took over all of that for a period of time and then of course when we became more famous uh, we were put out of business by criminals people who deliberately attacked us uh and uh, put us out of business and ultimately um did all sorts of things uh to um to cause problems. This is the criminal element uh, that is running everything in this world who directly works with intelligence agencies, your local uh, unlaw enforcement, and all that goes on. So there are millions of people to do it. They go in, they buy all your neighbors off, and for 20 years all of my neighbors were working against me. They caused all sorts of problems and everything they could do, and everybody bent over and had no problem doing it. And of course, remember, this isn't, uh, they are not taking out um, intelligence agencies or local police time. They work with the local street gangs. And this is very, very, happens all over the world. It's a carbon copy uh, 
program put together through, uh, I believe, the intelligence agencies that ultimately run these things through the local police and then through the local gangs, which the police support and never arrest. Uh, this was very, very true in the Coachella Valley, where I used to live, known for one of the cities there uh, called Palm Springs. And it has more gang members in that particular area that the police let settle there than anywhere in the world. The drug capital of the world now, or the United States at least, is Desert Hot Springs. This is a community just outside of Palm Springs. So this is quite uh, fascinating when you look at it. And of course, that's where I used to live in that particular area there. <coughs> so um, uh, people just don't understand the extent of things. It's almost comical, and I wouldn't have believed any of it myself. I've heard similar stories over the years and kind of laughed at them. Oh, you're just crazy. You're paranoid. Well, everyone should be very paranoid. And the point is, is it's amazing how absolutely everything that happens in this world of any note is completely and totally planned and staged. COVIDs, the wars, all of this stuff that we're going through right now is actually planned. There's plans for everything. We're now going through after this is the giant plan that's kicking in. Uh, what happens after what happened with these uh, COVID and uh, how now everything is being shut down. Then this uh, complete fake war that is going on. A kind of childish and ridiculous war um, by a superpower doesn't make any sense at all, but it's all planned. And if you look at where the dollars are going, and you look at a particularly a country like the Russia that had nothing and was getting to the point of bankruptcy, because guess what? Just like when the Soviet Union fell, it fell because of $20 a barrel gas. You can't run an empire on that. They had no money to do anything. So they had to give up the Soviet, quote, union which was probably one of the worst things to happen because it destabilized the world. Now we have a bunch of tin pot dictators uh, that are out there running their little things that anyway work with all the criminals. Now they're just the obvious criminal mobs in all those different countries like Bulgaria and Romania, all these places which of course are Axis followers who are working with the new leaders of Europe, the Axis powers, which is <coughs> headed by the Soviet Union and their compatriot uh, Germany. So the whole idea is that um, this is what's going on in the bigger picture, and very few people really understand.